Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. On behalf of Miele, I would like to welcome you here today. My name, as uh, Julian um, um, told you, is Ralf Kretschmer. I'm responsible for the segment uh, laundry technology um, professional at Miele. And as well, I want to introduce my colleague, Dr. Olga Erin. She is um, um, uh, responsible for the corporate development at uh, Miele Professional. Together, we are here um, to talk to you about the application of data mining for prospective assembly time determination. Let's have a look on the agenda. As you see, our talk is divided in five chapters. First, I want to um, tell you a little bit about the Miele Group and the business unit professional. Um, then my um, colleague, uh, Dr. Erwin, will talk about the research project Promondi and the time data management, followed by knowledge discovery for prospective assembly time prediction. Next, um, I will present the assembly time prediction in the product development phase, and at the end, um, we will have a, a short conclusion. Um, first, some facts about Miele. I think everyone knows Miele. Miele is a not so old um, company as we heard it uh, in the morning. It's, only, it's founded uh, in um, 1899. Um, by Karl Miele and Reinhard Zinkan, it, 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 and it's still a family-owned um, um, company. Now we have around about um, 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 80 family shareholders. Um, interesting is that, uh, that there are two representatives of the original family, um, Dr. Markus Miele and Dr. <coughs> Reinhard uh, um, Zinkan, in the senior management. As you see, the turnover is approximately 4 billion euro um, in the last years, um, a steep increase. And um, we have around about 19,500 employees, more uh, steady growth in the last years. Um, as you can see in the fourth box here, um, we have 48 um, sales subsidiaries all over the world with 12 um, uh, production plans all over the world. We focus on two areas. Um, oh, one moment, where is it? Yes, we focus on two areas in our product, uh, on our products. One is the domestic appliance area and the other is commercial machines. <coughs> The majority of 46% uh, is kitchen appliances, you see it there. For example, refrigerators, uh, microwaves, ovens, um, and so on, dishwashers. Um, second, laundry care is with 24% um, 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 a big um, um, business unit, washing machines, dryers, household ironers. And uh, on third position professional, our business unit is there with 12%. At, professional, um, um, at the professional business unit, we are nearly 2,600 uh, employees worldwide. Our turnover is nearly a half billion euros. And um, the biggest uh, segment is uh, commercial laundry with approximately 40%, um, followed by cleaning, disinfection, sterilization uh, with 22%, commercial dishwashing 12%. As you see here, a service is a, is a big business for us too. On about 27% we made with this part of our business. Yeah, we also use the 48 sales sub subsidiaries and um, we have three production sites. After this brief introduction, um, now my colleague Dr. Egorin will continue with uh, the presentation about our research work. There's only one microphone, that's a, that's a challenge, <laughs> sorry. 
So, hello everybody from my oh. side too. We've heard this uh, title of the project Promonde, I think twice or three times today in the morning. That's why let me just show the initial picture or the initial idea of this project. And this idea is also, uh, it's also the origin of our both use cases we will um, present to you later. So what can we see here? Promondi, as Julian Schaller already said, stays for prospective determination of assembly work content in digital factory. And these, as you can see here, we started this project in 2012. So it was not a year of big data or of smart data or industry 4.0 point. Nobody was talking about these words. But we were, the idea was, how can we map the product and process structures? So if you just have a look at the product emergence process and the different phases of product emergence process, you can um, see that we have some product planning phase or product development phase with functional bill of material or engineering bill of material as a central data structure or also central documents which are arriving during these phases. And we of course have also process planning and production phase. And in these phases of product emergence process, we have manufacturing bill of material to build the data structure. And the idea was to map this product and process structure, so to connect the both words of production planning and the word of product development. And it was not so easy as we thought because the data, the historical data, the data structures, they are not really as nice to analyze, uh, but nevertheless, we reached really good results in this project. And I think Regina Wallis will tell you something um, about how can you predict the process structure? So how can you predict assembly plans as really as a structured data? And we are going to tell you some details about how can you predict assembly time? Assembly time in the meaning of the duration of assembly processes. Maybe something, somebody of you is asking yourself at the moment, why did they choose assembly or manual assembly as the application field for data mining? So many processes are realized automatically in the factories and um, therefore we just brought one picture from our factory in Bielefeld. You can see here on, oops, uh, on, the, on this side, um, just a normal assembly line, manual assembly line, which you can find maybe everywhere in every company in Germany. And yes, we still have some assembly steps which should be done manually. Um, it depends on product complexity and also, of course, on the industry sector that the assembly time can take up to 70% of the whole production time. So on the one side, we can say that manual assembly is a widespread method, is a still a widespread method for, um, for multivariant production assembly. And on the other hand, we can say also that time data or assembly time data is a relevant basis for different planning processes and for different decision-making processes. Here you can see just some examples. It's a basis for work system design or human resource planning or capacity planning or make or buy decisions. So how can we get all this assembly time data or how can we predict assembly duration? As uh, Professor Deuser mentioned today in the morning, of course we have the standard methods of industrial engineering, for example, um, to predict the time or to determine the time, the assembly time, we can use time and motion study, for example, during the production phase, or we can just um, I register the time by devices, but it is it not so easy for, um, for manual assembly lines. We can simulate the data or we can use the predetermined motion time systems. But if you come up to product development phase or to the earlier phases of product emergence process, you don't have this range of methods you can apply to determine the assembly time or to predict the assembly time. That was the question, uh, one of the questions in this research project. How can we use the data we have during this product emergence process or we collect during the product emergence process to, in, to, estab or to estimate or to predict the assembly time? And um, as I said, we would like to show you two different methods um, or two different um, approaches. The first one is uh, 
assembly time prediction in the product development phase. Ralph uh, Kretschmer will explain you what structures of product and process data do you need to predict this assembly time. And um, I would like to focus on another topic. I would like to focus the process of knowledge discovery for assembly time prediction. So we've heard today in the morning, I think also twice or three times, communication in the project teams, it's one of the major challenges for data mining projects. People don't understand each other if they meet and if they have to solve one task. It was one of uh, the issues why we said, okay, we have this crisp data mining model, which was really a standard one to to realize data mining projects. But of course you have to adapt to this model or to specify this model, let me say, me say it so, to specify this model for the application field. And that's why we just thought, okay, why don't we specify or, uh, or adapt to this model for the application field of industrial data or for the application field of time data management. The first, uh, the whole knowledge discovery process is divided into three phases. It's a preparation phase where you try to understand the business and to understand their use case. The second phase is the data mining phase with all the steps you can do actually inside of Rapid Miner. And the third play, uh, phase is realization. Let me give you an overview about some details from this knowledge discovery process. What does it mean, the third step here, define the goals of knowledge discovery? First of all, you have to speak to people, to your interdisciplinary team and try to understand, are they trying to solve a classification problem or are they trying to solve a regression problem or is it maybe some kind of unsupervised learning methods? I'm not talking about the methods which are used during the preparation phase, during the data preparation. I'm talking about the final goal of the people, what they, do they want to get from you after this project. So it's a really important um, step. The next one is um, oh, something you cannot see here. Um, here stays morphology of time data management. So we were talking about time data management as application field or about assembly planning and you of course can um, define some criteria to describe this application field. So you can go to the people and ask them, okay, what about the determination methods? What time data do you have already? In which IT systems can I find them? So we characterize the time data management as application field with different criteria and different characteristics. The next phase, um, and you just can see here, small processes from Rapid Miner was completely implemented inside of Rapid Miner. So you have all the relevant operators from the import of data and for operators for descriptive and explorative analysis of the data. And you also, of course, can create or train and apply the data mining models itself. And uh, the first phase, the realization phase, um, you of course have to think about how can you integrate the results into your processes and Professor Doyle mentioned two possibilities. You can integrate the results in some IT systems you have in your house or you maybe can do another IT prototype to, to show the results of this process. And um, we create an IT prototype, the so-called prototype ProVidSci, to support all these steps of the knowledge discovery process. I just brought some screenshots from this prototype. Let me show it to you. You can see here all the criteria. How can you communicate with your interdisciplinary team if you are going to solve some problems within time data management as application field on the one side. On the other hand, you can also integrate the rapid miner processes itself. So you can just use the Java IP of rapid miner to integrate the process into the IT prototype. And you of course can have some possibilities to control the process through some macro values. So the end user don't really see all the rapid minor processes they are inside or undercover, let me say it so, but they get all the results they need and they can choose the models they want to apply there. I don't want to tell you every, every details, technical details about the process. We can do it after the presentation, no problem. But I just put two different or one result from this application model. 
we tried different um, data mining methods. It's a standard work, I think, and uh, Professor Katarina Morik mentioned it today in the morning. Um, you just have to try different models because it depends on data which model will fit and which will not fit. And we tried here um, the classical one, let me say it so, with linear regression. It's the standard one and also some new data mining methods like support vector regression or regression model trees. And as you can see, here we achieved different relative errors. So for this data set, it was the best method to do linear regression or support vector regression, but I don't want to advise you and to take every time only these two methods. You just have to try all the relevant methods and you will, the be you will find the best one. These uh, results show um, us also that we can use the assembly time prediction via data mining for long-term planning processes. So, because there are some studies about the needed accuracy of assembly time for long-term processes, planning processes, and um, we are going, um, they are talking about plus minus 20% to, to use this data for, for example, capacity planning or make or buy decisions. So, these were some results from that part. I hand over to Ralph again. Thank you. Okay. Yes, and now I will go on with the continuity of time data determination um, along the product emergence process called PEP. Here you see some main focuses of the PEP. On the left side, the development phase um, with the main responsible by the product designer and on the right side, um, the process planning um, responsible are uh, the industrial engineer and the assembly planner. For the process planning, um, the determination um, of um, 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 the target time is very common. Um, especially the anal analysis of predeter predetermined uh, motion time systems um, like um, the um, universal analysis system of um, MTM is um, very often used uh, for um, many manual assembly processes. So a lot of data therefore exists. A little bit earlier in the um, um, product emergence process, um, we have um, um, the product orientated um, design here um, with the assessment of the assembly fairness. Um, um, this assembly um, um, fairness, this assessment of the assembly fairness is, is not so often, um, not so common in use. But with this, you have the possibility to, to give out uh, approximate time. Altogether, we call this process data because it's more on the right side, uh, less on the left side. As you can see now, um, in the earlier phase of the development process, there is no time um, information, no estimation, no time prediction. And um, which um, for us, we think that's important. Everything know that, for example, to support the design process, to get early information about the assembly uh, processes um, to, 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 to manage the design for a good assembly and on the other side to get information um, um, for the management, for management decisions, for example, uh, make or buy or something like that. So we said we have to, to um, find a solution and um, the time type we, um, we, we see though as a prediction time because it's a, in a very early phase and we want to do it, um, or we, we did it with a prospective assembly time prediction um, with a data mining tool, Rapid Miner. Yes, what are the main challenges there? Um, there are many challenges, especially the data pre uh, preparation um, was um, a, a very big um, um, work. Um, two challenges um, were very big. I will show it to you now. Um, the, on the one hand, um, um, we um, have the product data. The product data in a hierarchical product structure. You see that a product on the first level, for example, a component, second level, a component group, sorry, and the components on the third level. 
Um, therefore, a lot of data exists, for example, in the CAD systems or the product, product data management systems. On the other side, we have the process data, especially the data of the um, 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 environment of um, MTM. For example, we use here the universal analysis system. Therefore, the basic assembly times um, are um, um, available in the software. And normally, this data is um, execution oriented. Um, and as you see here, we want to make a prediction, so we have to uh, change this orientation. And we change it in such a way that we make it pro product oriented. That was one big challenge, so you have to change the structure of the time data in the software tool. The other thing was to get a better, um, um, uh, to better get a result um, um, for the data mining, for the prediction. Um, we, uh, we, we, we decided to um, separate the building blocks in the um, um, UAA system, U, U, um, universal anal anal analysis system. On the one hand, we said the joining pro uh, processes are interesting for, uh, for us, so we separate, uh, separated on the one hand to the joining processes, and on the other side, the connection processes. <coughs> yes, and Another big challenge was um, 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 the disadvantage that on this side, in this data set, there was no identification of the data, no identification which is related to the components. We are now product ori oriented, but we have no mapping there. So we have to implement um, the idea and we use the material number um, in these data sets here. Now it was possible to map each other and that was the basis for the prediction. On the next slide, I will show you the concept of the um, prediction. On this slide, you see on the left side the, the, um, the database on the past. Um, on the one hand, the components of the past uh, the components with the info geometrical information, with their weight, with their material, and so on. Um, a lot of data, I told you uh, on the last slide, um, because it, uh, it comes out of the CAD system, and the CAD is a very common um, um, system, a very common tool. On the other side, sorry, um, we have the process data, also for the um, 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 components of the past, of the um, uh, and um, of the process of the past, the building blocks for the joining process and the building blocks for the connection processes. And they are mapped to each other via the idea. That's for the past, and so we could train the model. And to use this data for a new component, you have a new component, for example, um, a complete new component um, which is designed or a component um, which is changed in the, in the um, um, computer-aided design. Um, so you have this information, for example, um, um, the geometrical information and the material and, and so on. To get together with additional information from the designer about the connection process types you want to use and the number of this, um, um, he gave this inform or he gave this information in the system, and then we began with um, the data mining algorithm. We used uh, the identification about the k nearest uh, neighbor algorithm, and um, this algorithm, uh, algorithm um, 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 looked after um, 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 the parts of the past or the components of the past which are very similar to this um, uh, new component. Together with this, um, the prediction um, um, could start uh, working and separated in, for the joining processes and the connection processes, um, the predicted building blocks um, were offered and uh, with adding um, both together, you get the assembly time for, um, for the new component. Yes, here on this slide, I want to give you a short um, um, information about an example uh, and the results of this example. Um, here you see the relative error, the deviation to the system of uh, predetermined time. This was the basis. 
and you have, uh, please to look um, on the green and um, um, the red bars uh, and their results. On the one hand, we have the assembly time prediction for a change computer aided design. That means that we um, have information um, about um, similar parts, elder parts of the past, which are, um, um, yeah, which are similar, which are um, um, very close to the new part. And with the uh, red bars, you see uh, uh, the same prediction for a complete new computer aided design where no component family exists or similar parts exist. And you see that um, the green bars are around about um, up to 5% uh, deviation and the red one are you know, around about 10%. Uh, the example was the uh, front panel of a washing machine um, for which we um, um, prepared the data. Yeah, now I will come to our conclusion. Yes, as I told you, the best results for further development um, are achieved within the component family, widely varying quality, um, of results for complete, um, you get um, um, uh, for complete new designs um, or missing component families. On our, math, on, on our last slide, I uh, would like to end with some key results. First, the integration of data mining of, for prospective determination of assembly time leads to essential added value um, for planning and decision making. And supports the idea of simultaneous engineering to, you, to reduce the product emergence time. Furthermore, the current portfolio of methods for time determination um, can be successfully extended um, by new data mining methods. And at least we want to point out fundamental factors of success are the integration of specific know-how know -how of the apl application area especially at the beginning um, of the knowledge discovery. We heard it um, uh, some hours ago. And to overcome the challenges of historically evolved IT infrastructures. Thank you very much for your attention. On this um, um, last slide, we, we only have one, one um, um, example. We also tested another example. So, um, um, that was only a very um, 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 common um, um, product. Um, everyone knows a washing machine and everyone knows a front panel, and so we use this data. So, Do you plan to extend it? Do you plan to extend it further? Yes, um, but um, behind uh, that there is a, a management decision um, because we have to change um, 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 the MTM data structure and um, this solution um, is, still off, is, still, um, yeah, or, is still open here. Yeah, thanks. Maybe one small question for your po uh, POBI design tool. Um, is that a development by Nina or is that? It's developed at the Institute of Production Systems. Is that yeah. also accessible to the development of community or just for, for your job? I think so. Let me <laughs> just show. How much do you pay? Yeah, you, you figure it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my property. Any, any urgent questions? <laughs> so, thank you very much again. Thank you. Yeah.